Hello students, my name is Shayan Mitra. Uh, today I am going to take in the class of signal and system and today's topic is introduction to Fourier series and eigenvalues. Okay. And I am a faculty member of Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering of one second. Department of uh, I am the faculty member of Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering of Greater Kolkata College of Engineering and Management. So today I am going to take in the class of introduction to Fourier series and eigenvalues. Okay. So and this is the the subject name as we have already said and the subject course code is EC three zero three and this is the lecture number thirteen. Okay. So let's begin with the lecture. Okay. So as we have already uh, discussed here that uh, today's topic is about the eigenvalues and eigen functions and then we are going to discuss about the Fourier series representations. Okay. Uh, so um, as uh, we should begin with the class uh, okay yes so as we are we can see in the screen that in the first step we are going to discuss about the response of lta system to complex exponential now uh, as we have already discussed what is the complex exponential is a complex exponential means a form of signal which can be represented by e to the power st or z to the power n these are the functions okay e to the power st or z to the power n what it means it means that uh, it what does that mean it means that we can uh, now in this from this uh, chapter uh, uh, we are going to discuss about the um, response of an lti system to different kind of general uh, complex exponential function now uh, in the first step today's in today's lecture we are going to discuss about the advantage of using a general complex exponentials how could we uh, represent a general com uh, complex exponential function using the LTI system and how the response can be calculated and why it is easier to calculate a uh, exponential function or exponential signal uh, at um, the response of a uh, complex exponential function uh, through a LTI system we are going to discuss that. Uh, we will discuss about the what is the real factor, what is known as eigenvalue and eigenfunctions, and uh, in the next step we are going to discuss about the Fourier series. So, let's uh, as we uh, uh, discussing here that now there are so many things that we have written here. So, first uh, suppose uh, we have taken a signal which is a continuous time signal that is e to the power st, okay, and the discrete time signal is z to the power n. So, these are the input signals. Now uh, we are now the there is a definition or you can say anything that the way that eigenvalue and eigenfunction are being described or are being uh, used the basic form how all these eigenvalue or eigenfunctions are are, are uh, extracted okay uh, so we are going to discuss that so first understand that the basic definition is that suppose there is a complex exponential function that is a continuous time signal which is e to the power st. So at the output of that LTI system, suppose this function, the signal or function are being fed to a LTI system and the output of this specific uh, exponential signals will be e to the power st. It means the same identical signal which is well, which has been fed to the LTI system that is e to the power st. So at the output we will get e to the power st multiplied with some specific or definite form which is here which has been uh, defined as h of s. In general we know it as a eigenvalue and that specific this specific exponential function that has been fed to the system is known as complex exponential function which is also known as eigen function. So this is a eigen function, okay, and this sorry this this value is known as eigen values. So e to the power st is eigen function and e to the h of s is eigen value. So what does that mean? It means suppose there is a complex exponential function. Now I have fed it to a specific LTI system. Now that specific uh, uh, will fed to a LTI system at the output will get the sp that specific input signal that has been fed to the uh, LTI system and with that we will get we will get a uh, multiplied form of constant okay that constant value is known as eigen value and that function this specific complex exponential function is known as eigen function okay so now we are going to describe using the convolution 
how this is this can be extracted okay so let's begin okay so simple mathematical uh, terms are being used here suppose uh, query here okay one second okay so let's start okay so suppose uh, simple that we got a input signal x of t okay now this x of x of t uh, has been written as e to the power x t it means this input signal that is going to be fed to lti system is a general complex exponential function okay so it has been done next now using the convolution integral we'll 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 get the output so how we'll get the output y of t y of t is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity h tau x t minus tau d tau this is the function okay this is the output function because uh, from the definition of convolution we know that uh, any specific output can be written as the impulse response of the specific uh, signal into that uh, input signal so this can be written simply that h tau into x t minus tau we have already discussed this in earlier lectures the how can we uh, as the convolution is uh, follow as follows the associative form uh, form so we can written that we can write x t into h t minus tau or we can write h tau into x t minus tau any form any form can be written here okay so the next step is in 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 the in the uh, place of x t minus tau we can put the x e to the power s t minus tau into h tau okay so expressing this as e to the power s t into the power minus s t we get this this form y of t is equal to e to the power s t integration minus into the plus infinity h tau e to the power minus s tau d tau now tau is a dummy variable okay so we know that what is the value of tau so what does that mean is that the right hand side of the equation is converges responses to the e to the power st is of the form is this why because e to the power st now tau is a dummy variable what does that mean it means that we can control the value of tau okay it depending we can control the value of tau okay so as we know that y of t or the output of the specific LTI system is nothing but the multiplication of e to the power st into the power h, s, h of s. This h of s is known as eigenvalue. It means this eigenvalue is nothing but a specifically a constant value. And it is multiplied with the input function. Now input function can be varied depending is, uh, as it is uh, joined with the independent variable t. So depending upon that it can change this. But what we are getting from this specific equations that any kind of a general complex exponential function can be written in the form of a eigen function multiplied to the eigen value will only provide us the output of the specific lti system now if this function is not an now now suppose the system sorry now suppose suppose the system is not an lti system okay so we are not going to get this kind of a result that's a very important factor so that's why here there are different kind of probability of providing a answer depending upon the system. Now suppose this is not an LTI system. So we will have to use a different methodology to extract the output using the input. Okay. But in case of LTI system as it is according to your uh, according to the uh, um, syllabus we are going to use this specific property uh, as a useful tool to extract different kind of to analyze different kind of signals. Okay. So here this is the uh, basic uh, clear picture of what is an eigen value and what is an eigen function for continuous time signal now we will take the same steps same process to extract the output of a discrete time signal which will be fed to a lti system okay so the same process we will take the same process here that x of n is equal to z to the power n okay so these are this is my input signal now this input signal the same process will take will take y, y of n will be mi minus infinity to plus infinity h of k into x of n minus k now we'll put the value of x of n in the place of x of n minus k we'll put the value of z to the power n so we'll get z to the power n minus k the same process will be uh, taken z to the power n will be um, is a multiplied form it will we will 
take the common of it and we will get um, summation of k minus infinity to plus infinity within h of k into e to the power z to the power minus k. So now the value of k is absolutely is a dip, is, is, a, is also a practically a dummy variable. So the value of k will be in control of the person who controlling the system. So it could be written as a constant form or a constant value. Okay. So the same process has been taken here and we can write down that uh, any kind of this y of n can be written here as this and h of z is a eigen value and z to the power n is a eigen function and uh, so, so on and so forth. Now, now as it is an L, uh, LTI system we can also use the superposition theorem and the uh, constant coefficient multiplication form where we, uh, we can provide uh, with the uh, input is that and output will be this. So, what we are getting from this all this mathematical calculation here that any kind of a general complex exponential function which could be uh, fed to a LTI system will provide us a very certain amount of in output signal or it could be said in a that this way that an output signal for a complex exponential function can be easily calculable, calculable okay easily calculatable simple form that we just have to know the input signal that has been that has been fed to the system and we have to just calculate the value h of s. So, any kind of output signal for a general complex exponential function is very much predictable. Okay. It will be on a form of constant coefficient multiplied with exponential function. Okay. And as we already know that any, any kind of LTI system only uh, maintain the superposition property also. So, it could be written here as this. Okay. This is the form. Okay. Okay. So, now what you are getting there from it, now suppose this is an x of t is a combination of different kind of uh, complex exponential function. So, output of that function will be very much predictable and that is this. For any kind of a series of input signal, we get this out, this as output a s of x k, h of s k, e to the power s k t. The same process, the same input is just multiplied with a specific constant, constant coefficient which is known as eigen value. So, this only will provide us the output signal. We do not have to go through any rigorous process to extract the output for a specific uh, general complex exponential function in case of an LTI system. Okay. So, that is why this is the uh, specific uh, uh, I would say um, significance of using a uh, LTI system for general complex exponential function because uh, in case of general complex exponential function combine, combined with an LTI system we only get a very predictable output where the output can be easily calculatable for uh, and this will be useful for very complex uh, signals that we are need to be processed we, we need to we need to process okay so depending upon the signal this eigen value eigen function uh, concept is very much useful as a it, it will be it will work as a very useful tool and this is the beginning of a fourier series representation okay so uh, let's go to the next step now before getting into the uh, part now now as we are discussing about e to the power s t or z to the power n as an exponential function now it is a very important uh, to understand that in, in the scope of our syllabus that we will only take that s will be replaced by j omega. So, what does that mean is that we consider only complex exponential of the form e to the power j omega t. Ah, okay. And similarly, in case of discrete time, we restrict the range of values of z to those of unit magnitude. It means z will be e to the power j omega. Okay. So, that we focus on complex exponential of the form e to the power j omega n. So, our whole focus will be on complex exponential form of e to the power j omega t for continuous time signal and for discrete time uh, 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 signal the uh, the uh, all focus on the the all focus will be on the complex exponential of the form e to the power j omega n okay so uh, this is a specific example example 3.1 we are going to simple that uh, suppose one second we will take another okay no there is only one example we are going to go through this example okay so this is y of t okay simple 
So, as we are can saying that the output of an LTI system will be uh, the delay of 3 ok x of t minus 3 is the uh, output of y uh, uh, as is the, is the y, uh, y of t is the output and x of t uh, now suppose this input to the system is a complex exponential signal which is e to the power j 2 t ok. So, form this ok. So, we will put uh, as this is the input what will happen the output will be e to the power j 2 t minus 3 and it could be written as e to the power minus j 6 e to the power j 2 t. Now, e to the power j 2 t this is the input signal and it will be it is it is already multiplied with the function e to the power minus j 6. So, e to the power minus j 6 will be uh, the eigen value and e to the power j 2 t will be as the eigen function ok. So, this is the form. Now, we if we uh, dig deep to this uh, specific uh, problem what we get here is that this equation this equation is in the form of equation 3.5 as we expect since we have already discussed about it ok. So, h j of t 2 now the associated eigen value is h of j 2 because this is s that the point this is s. So, all the form all the exponential form can be written in this form. So, that is why it is been uh, considered as a constant value. So, h of j 2 t is e to the power minus j 6. Now, it is straightforward to confirm equation 3.6 for this example specifically from equation 3.17 this equation the impulse response of the system is h of t del t minus tau substituting into equation 3.6 we obtain this ok e to the minus 3 s and we already know e to the power j 2 is e to the minus j 6 ok. Now, suppose we take ok now suppose this is an input signal cos 40 plus cos 70 ok. The same process will be applied to this specific LTI system once again sorry ok. So, the cos of 40 minus 3 plus cos of 70 minus 3 we just use the Euler's relation and we get x of t is half e to the power j 40 plus half e to the power minus j 40 plus as as so on as go on. We will just take a close look we will understand what will happen ok. Just we have you just use the Euler's formula. Now, now this is the input signal. Now, this input signal will be multiplied with what? So, this is the input signal. Now, this is the constant coefficient and this is the e to the power j 40 is for the input signal. Now, the half and e to the power j 40 will be in an intact form ok. So, as we know now the output will be e to the is will be multiplied with e to the power minus j 12. Why? Because we already seen here that h of j 2 is nothing but e to the power minus j 6. So, it is nothing but the uh, we have to multiply this j 2 with uh, in, uh, 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 multiplied with 3. So, here it is this the value of s is e to the power j 4. So, it will be multiplied with 3. So, it will be e to the minus j, j 12 ok this is for uh, minus now for minus value we will get a plus e to the power j 12 it for e to the power j 7 we get 21 minus and for minus we get plus e to the power j 21 ok. So, this is the output. So, this is the specific way. So, now for any kind of a input signal any kind of a uh, LTI system now if we can understand what is the eigen value specific eigen value for this specific LTI system we can use that specific property to justify or not justify to analyze any kind of a signal which uh, is being fed to a specific LTI system ok. Let us go to the next slide. y of t is half e to the power j 4 t minus 3 plus half e to the power minus j 4 t minus 3 and so, so on and so forth. So, uh, we just rearrange it and the output will be cos 4 t minus 3 plus cos 7 t minus 3 that is basically nothing but a delay of 3 for specific input signal. For this simple example multiplication of each periodic exponential component of x t for example, half e to the power j 40 by the corresponding eigen value effectively causes effectively causes the input component to shift in time by 3. Obviously, in this case we can determine y of t embodied in equation uh, ok ok. So, ok. So, this is the end of eigen value eigen function property and we, uh, we have discussed it with a specific example and now let us get a deep di dive down to a Fourier series representation of a continuous time periodic signal ok. So, let us begin with it. Now, 
we have already discussed that what is a periodic signal is a periodic signal is a signal which is repeated after a specific time period so this x of t will be repeated after a, a time plus t okay this has been very simply understandable now the fundamental period of xt is the minimum positive non zero value of t for which equation 3.21 is satisfied so and the value omega 0 is 2 pi by t is referred to as the fundamental frequency there's a basic a function that value omega 0 is equal to 2 pi by t is nothing but a fundamental frequency now from the uh, we know that x of t is cos omega 0 t when you use that and the period of a complex exponential function is x of t to the power j omega 0 t now both of these signal periodic fundamental frequency omega 0 and fundamental period is 2 pi by omega 0 or 2 omega 0 can be written as omega 0 is equal to 2 pi by t now from this we can write the specific signal using e to the power j k omega 0 t or e to the power j k by 2 pi by t small t now this is nothing but the a Fourier series representation now what does that even mean it means now we have x of t now x of t is what is x of t cos omega 0 t now cos omega 0 t using Euler's formula we can write cos omega 0 t as how uh, what is the uh, value of cos omega 0 t for in case of it will be e to the power j theta cos omega 0 ok uh, the value of cos omega 0 2 will be uh, e to the power e to the power j theta minus e to the power minus j theta by 2j so that is the value of cos omega 0 so a value any kind of sinusoidal function can be written as in the form of general complex exponential ok so that is the basic fundamental uh, fundamental of uh, Fourier series representation what does that mean it means any kind of a complex exponential signal can be can be written as linear combination of harmonically related complex exponential of the form this so this is the Fourier representation of a periodic signal for continuous time basically continuous time periodic signal for any kind of a continuous time periodic signal can be written in the form of linear combination of harmonically related complex exponential of the form now one thing that is needed to be uh, uh, we need to clarify here that the first property is that any kind of a con uh, periodic signal in case of con here we are discussing about continuous time periodic signal can be written in the form of complex exponential simple now it could be written as it should be written as the linear combination of harmonically related complex exponential now the what is the harmonics means harmonics means suppose a specific signal has a fundamental period of 2 pi by omega 0 okay or frequency is 2 pi by t as we have already discussed here now the harmonics means the upper multiple or the uh, multiples of that specific fundamental frequency okay the signals the the harmonics are nothing but the multiple of the specific fundamental frequency so any kind of a any kind of a signal can be any kind of a periodic signal continuous time periodic signal can be written as the linear combination of harmonically related complex exponential form okay and the form is x of t k is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity a sub x k e to the power j k omega 0 t or it could be written as omega 0 is 2 pi by t and k is nothing but the multiples of the specific function ok and now now a sub x k is nothing but the constant coefficient of the specific signal ok and in the so these are the example of complex exponential ok could be written as here now in the next lecture we are going to discuss about the complex the we will take a deep dive on the Fourier series representation how a signal can be represented in a Fourier series representation what is the phase response and magnitude response and uh, what is the properties of Fourier series uh, of continuous time Fourier series and we will uh, take a uh, we will understand how a signal can be what is the um, uh, how we analyze a signal using Fourier series and uh, in case of continuous time signal and as well as discrete time signal ok and you also discuss in the next I think uh, we will take total 5 lecture to understand what is Fourier series the all the for, uh, discrete time Fourier series continuous time Fourier series all their properties uh, how it is related to LTI system what is the significance of using a Fourier series in LTI system how we analyze a signal and how we extract a uh, phase response magnitude response ok for uh, using 
uh, Fourier series and what is the difference between a discrete time Fourier series and continuous time Fourier series. Okay. So, we will conclude uh, today's lecture. In the next lecture, we are going to uh, take many examples to understand what is the Fourier series, how, what is the ma how it is uh, can be mathematically, um, extract, uh, mathematically extracted and used and what is analysis equation and synthesis equations are and how we understand how we uh, extract the constant coefficient as a magnitude response and phase response. Okay. So, okay. Thank you.